by Jews 9th and 10th grade channel. I'm your teacher Aishwarya and to kickstart economics chapter on the channel, I am here with the first lesson of the first chapter in economics which is development. And today is going to be the first part of this particular chapter where we are going to cover the introduction to development and get a basic idea of what is development, how do we calculate or how do we understand development and what is you know national development and we're going to go along those lines yes so i hope all of you here are ready for the class and i hope that my audio my video and my screen and what i'm writing on the screen is visible for all of you if it is please do give me a quick thumbs up in the live chat to let me know that we are good to go and as you can see to kick start this particular chapter for the 2023-2024 board exams i hope all of you are ready now this chapter right here is a very easy chapter right and of course as you all know for this chapter they normally ask a lot of MCQ based questions and sometimes some three markers also come in your social studies exam okay but this is a very simple chapter like it is what do you say it is not something that you have to really break your head to understand it's actually very simple and it's very easy all you need to do is to pay attention to the nitty gritties of this chapter which is why i request all the students right whenever you are watching this video whether it be at the live stream or whether it be much later after the live stream few things to keep in mind right please have your textbooks please have your notebooks right and please have a pencil ready with you right just to make things easier for all of you i'll keep the textbook right here with me so that i can give you the page numbers where you can mark it as well right so important page numbers important pointers also i will be discussing because doing ncrt reading side by side will become very difficult which is why all i can do is to tell you important page numbers where you need to put star marks so this will help you in your examination secondly please make sure that all of you have your water bottles ready ready with you please have you know make sure that whenever you are asking me doubts write down your doubts and key because when I am teaching I might get a little carried away right I might get a little carried away while teaching which is why I may not have a look at your doubts but it's okay I will do a doubt board section where you will be able to take all of it so are we all ready for the class students do you have all of this ready yes and this if it is ready this is something I expect you to have it for all classes it should not be that you have it just you know for my class every class you need to make sure that you have all of this ready and as you all know for 10 standard we are going to be getting very super aggressive we are going to be taking some extra classes also because I understand that all of you have your unit tests and everything coming very soon which is why of course we will be following our regular timetable on the channel right so we will be following the regular timetable table on the channel every day at 7 p.m. we are going to be having classes as you know today is social science tomorrow is going to be biology we're going to be doing some important you know questions from life processes tomorrow so don't miss out that and apart from this we will be get taking some extra classes for you normally maybe at 9 p.m. or sometimes we will take it at 8 p.m. right so now this of course depends upon a lot of flexibility these are of course fixed but we will take some flexible classes for social social sciences which is why hitting the subscribe button on this channel is very important because there will be extra classes which are being taken so as you all know Ankita ma'am is going to be doing power sharing tomorrow which of course is going to be an extra class that she is taking to make sure that all of you have your syllabus completed right so students subscribing to the channel is very very important if you want regular notifications hit the bell icon also so that it helps you keep a track of what we do on the channel right we know that your your preparation whether it's your unit test whether it's your midterm exam whether if it is for NTSC we want to make sure that we are like a buddy to all of you which is why all we ask you in return is to hit that subscribe button no nothing more we're asking so simple and the subscribe is going to help you only right notification is going to come to you notification is not going to come to me just because you know Johnny or student watched Ash or anybody asked notification is not going to come to me right it'll help you which is why I request all of you to please make sure that you subscribe and very quickly just small thing I will tell you I'm not very fluent in Hindi which is why I mainly speak in English but I will try my best to give you some easy relatable examples. So what are we studying today? What are the topics we are covering today? Like I said, this is going to be part one of two because if I do the whole chapter at one shot, it'll be a lot for you to take it. So we'll break it down and we will learn. Okay. So today we're going to be learning easy peasy things, right? That is what is development? What is income? 
And one of the other goals that we need to keep in mind when we talk about development, then we're going to talk about national development. And then of course, we're also going to be comparing how we can compare different countries and say one is developed, one is not developed, right? So let's get started with some simple examples, okay? And then let's understand this basic idea of development. I'm going to show you a picture first, yes? So I am going to do, I'm going to show you a picture first. And I want to show you this very old picture. Now students, I am from Bangalore, okay? I am from Bangalore and see, I came into Bangalore, maybe I moved to Bangalore when I was in 2000, the year 2000, okay? Now it's 2023. Now this is a picture that I have also not seen. This was Bangalore way back in the 1900s. Now if I show you a picture of Bangalore right now, yes? So I'm going to fast forward and show you a picture of Bangalore right now. This is how Bangalore in 2023 looks like. Now if I ask you, what changed from 2009, 1900 to way back in 2023? What will you tell me? Yes, if I say what is it, what happened to Bangalore between 1900 or let's say 2000, the year 2000 that I moved in to 2023? Yes, what is the one word that you will unanimously tell without even really telling? I mean, you know, it's something that you will automatically tell. Yes? Exactly. Ma'am, shops have come and development happened. Okay. Now, let's talk about when you, so now when you're associating development, yes, when you said the word development, why did you tell me development? You told me, ma'am, if I go back in 1900, shops were not there, people were less, it just looks like some buildings are there, things are looking, see, shops are still there, okay, people are also there. But somehow a lot of different things are here, right? You are saying, ma'am, there is technology, right? Maybe the lighting and everything has become better. So those are some observations you have made, right? So these are observations. Yes, I want you to observe now. I don't want you to come and tell me exactly what is what. Now, second of all, this is again Bombay, right? So we see that Bombay in 1900s. Very, very magnificent place, right? Can you tell me? Which is this particular place in Bombay? Can you tell me? Yes, I do remember. Abhishek, I'll tell you that towards the end of the class, right? Somebody said, you are majestic. Hey, this is not... Oh, yeah. Sorry, there's also... Everyone, quickly in the live chat, I need you to tell me. Identify this place. This is not... Okay. Terminus. Exactly. This is Victoria, this is the terminus, right? CST that is there. Chhatrapati Shivaji terminus, not Taj Hotel. No, no. Looks like it, but no, right? So this, of course, is Mumbai in 2023. And if I ask you the same question, you will tell me, ma'am, development happened. So here, in all these cases, the observations we have made from then to now, we are using this word development. So how do we understand development? Now, if we have to use a simple understanding of development, see, because it's a very comprehensive word, no? This is something that is normally used, right? We say that crops are well-developed, we use it in biology. We can use it in technology is well-developed. Then we can say country is well-developed. So we use all of these terms, yes? Now, development, you can say, can be mentioned or understood as progress, right? So, we are making things better or we are growing, right? So, key, let's keep these two things in mind. Progress, growth, betterment, yes, so something to become better at. Now, let's meet three people, okay? We're going to meet three people. I have Aryan. I have a farmer here, Ramappa, and I have this girl here, Trupti, who's very enthusiastic. Now, if I ask Aryan, okay, Aryan is in 10th standard, and now many of you, he's like your buddy. Now, if I ask you, what do you mean or what is progress to you? Yes? So, if I ask you, for a 10th standard student, if you have to become well-developed or if you have to become progress or if you have to progress in life, what are the things you will tell? What are your goals in that way? Yes, top in exams, okay, get more marks, right? Then, of course, study, study regularly, very good, get good grades, no, you have to get good grades, yes, all of you want good health, yes, very good, you want good health. What else? Ah, you want to be creative, you want to get money and make job, ha, ha, so get money, 
and of course get a job all right get 100% get enough exercise okay many of you have many goals that you want to reach right so all of you here have certain goals that you want to reach in order to progress and become better now if you were to ask me ma'am what do you want right what how do you want to become better at something how do you want to progress I might say, okay, I want to put in extra hours to teach my children, right? I want to make sure that I do extra hours of teaching so that my children understand better. I hope that I study enough for my class so that everybody is able to understand easily. I also want to make sure that I have enough time to exercise because of late I am not getting enough time to exercise. And of course, I want to make sure that I go to dance classes regularly. Now, as you can see, you and I are both humans, right? You and I are both humans. You and I both have goals. But our ideas of progress is quite different, right? Our idea of progress is different. Similarly, if I look at Ramappa, who is a farmer. Yes, he is a farmer. Now, if I ask him, Ramappa, what is your idea of development? Or what is your idea of progress? He'll be like, you know what? If my crops grow better than what they did before, well and good for me. I will make, you know, it'll be good for me. Similarly, if I ask Tripti, she will tell me that, you know, off late, I want to make sure that I do well at my job. I want to grow. I want to become the vice president of the company. And I, right now, I am just a manager, but I want to be the vice president tomorrow. So that is something that we see. So what do we all understand? We understand that the ideology of development, right? Development is analogous or I can say that when we say development, idea of growth, idea of achievement, idea of progress, becoming better, evolve and become a better version of ourselves. That is something that we do, right? And we don't say development is just one aspect. We always say that it is a all-round progress, no? We always say that it is a all-round progress. Yes, so this is what we understand as development. But we also saw that the idea of development, whether it's me, whether it is you, whether it is Ramapa, whether it is Tripti, right? Do everybody want the same thing? Yes, do everybody want the same thing? Well, this is the idea of development, the same for everyone. No, right? The idea or ideology of development is not the same. As a matter of fact, the progress, right? The ideology of development that comes into the picture is different for different people. But why is it different for different people? Have you ever wondered? See, we learned about it. You will read it in your textbook also. Oh, it is different for different people, right? But why? Why is it different? Can you tell me? Can you take a guess? Yes? De development criteria are different. Okay, it is written in the textbook. Yes, all of you will quote. But why? Why is it that it is different for people, right? Yes. Now, you, let's assume Aryan who is there, right? Then, of course, we see that Aishwarya is there, right? Then, of course, we see that Ramappa is there, yes? And then, of course, we see here that there is Tripti, no? Now, in all these cases, everybody has different ways of thinking because their surroundings are different, right? Your surrounding that is there. Now, you are all like Aryan, my students like Pratna, Shruti, Tanu, Sridhar, you know, Rashi, all of you are all in different, different you are all in a student circle, right? You are all students at this point of life. So your surrounding is also with respect to students. You are in that age group. You are giving board exams. So you, your goals are now related to that. But right now, I am an adult, right? I am an adult. I am there alongside with many other adults. Yes. So my surrounding is different. Yes. So now you know my surrounding is different. Similarly, if you look at Ramappa, he's a farmer, right? And we know that Tripti works with managers. So her goals are different. So your developmental goals are influenced by your surroundings, right? So we see that they are influenced by your surroundings. So first and foremost, we have understood the basic idea of what is development, right? So if I have to give you a very fancy definition, development refers to the all-round progress that you make, which includes not only personal, it includes, you know, economic development, it includes, you know, with respect to life, security, so on and so forth. So this is a very simple idea of what is development. Now, let's understand 
how can we measure this development how can you say that i am more progressed than me right or this person is more progressed than that person so where does this whole idea come into the picture now if you look at somebody right let's assume that you have some person a no you have some person a now normally we say that you know especially how many of us have heard our relatives say Oh, you know, his son is very, uh, you know, he's done very well in life. He has done, you know, so well. He has a very fancy job at this very big company in USA. And he's making so, so much money, right? How many of us have heard this? At some point, we would have had some neighbor auntie tell us this. Maybe we would have heard some, you know, probably somebody at home say this, right? So if you study this, 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 it'll be very good for you because it will help you get that, right? We've all heard it. Nothing is do. Ha, ah, exactly. Famous quote, Sharma Ji ka beta, we are normally say that. Now, I don't want to use that common terminology, right? But of course, let's assume that this right here is Raj with a fancy job in USA and, you know, has got all the relatives approval. No? So, this of course, we see, we hear this. And how are we saying that Raj right here has done well in life and he's developed and he's progressed and he's had growth in life because of a very basic thing. That is about how much money he is making, right? So when he has money, he is able to afford things, right? Now he is able to afford things. No, he is able to afford maybe a big house. He is maybe able to maybe build a, get a car. He is able to maybe get good food at home, right? So maybe all of those things. Yes, simple, easy peasy. Now this of course is a very material thing. No, what do I mean by material? Very, um, what do you say, things which are around you, right? Now car, house, bike and all you can see. They are like, you know, tangible, material, basic things which are there, right? So money here, how much money you get or how much money you make in exchange for a service is what we call as income of the individual, right? So he is making, he is making so much money or he is getting this much income. So, how is income helping us, right? Or how does income matter? So, now of course, we know that people normally, right? Normally, when you see, if you have to study, right? When you study, you work hard. Many of you told me, ma'am, my goal is to make sure that I study, I work hard, I get a good job and I make money. So, that I can get a good quality life. I can build a house for myself. I can make sure I have a car for myself. I can get my favorite plants, right? I can buy. No, I can buy things. Afford means I can buy things. Yes? But... How do I get all of that? With the help of money. Now you imagine, right? This is your goals. Now you imagine that, do you think that all of these people, yes, so we see that all people want to ultimately, you know, do all of it. Now does it always mean that everybody, everybody here has individual goals? But do you think that everyone, everybody's goals, everybody's aspirations and developmental goals will be towards or is positive for others? Yes or no? Tanu, I hope you love economics also. Yes? Simple. I told you that we have Raj who is making a lot of money. Okay, well, good for him, right? But does it always mean that everybody's goals? I have three people here, right? All these people, their goals and all are towards the positive. Yes, everybody is for the benefit, right? Everybody will get benefited. No, all my goals, everybody is running in the same direction and they are reaching to the point when everybody will benefit. Yes or no? Absolutely not, right? Different people, when you look at the perspective of development, right? Different individuals will have different developmental goals. We have already established that. But... What is considered as development for one individual will not be considered as a development for another individual, right? There could be some, cons you know, there could be some conflicting ideas, yes? So there could be some conflicting ideas. Now, what do I mean by that? So in your textbook, you have an example given to you, yes? So as we all know, right, as we all know, that normally for construction of dams, we know that a large area is required to build the reservoir, right? So if you see what is a dam, a dam is nothing but it's an obstruction on the flow of the river, right? So if you have to build a reservoir, which I will teach you in a chapter in geography, but you have to build a reservoir, no, you need to clear a large area, which means that 
that large number of people, right? Large number of people will have to be displaced. Now for the, maybe the dam building company, this is a win-win, yay, I'll be able to generate hydroelectricity, right? Industrial is like, whoa, I will be able to do it. But what about the people who are living there, right? What about the people who are living there? Do you think that it is a, this developmental goal that they have, is it good for them? No, it is a loss, right? It's a loss for them. Similarly, if you've noticed, right? Normally, in I'll give you another example which is not there in your textbooks. But normally, there are many industrialists who build big manufacturing units, right? And sometimes, due to these manufacturing units which get built, right? So, we see that normally with respect to the manufacturing units, again, we see that a large number of people get affected or they get displaced, right? So, their homes might be there. They will give them some amount of money as a compensation, but they will be asked to relocate. But if they build this manufacturing unit, win-win for the industrialists because they are able to manufacture things at a large scale. But now for people who are living there, they need to move. They need to find a new home. And now they are left with no home at this point. So here, what is a development goal for one person cannot be the case for another person, right? Now this is a question they will ask you, okay? Are all developmental goals the same? Now they will not ask you directly, they'll ask you like a justification based question. So here learning the examples are very very important. So in your textbook please put a star mark next to this part where they ask you for the textbook, right? I mean where they ask you for this example, please put a star mark. Are all development goals the same? So they will ask you for an explanation based question, yes? Are we all clear? So so far we have associated, right? So page number, oh let me have a look at the textbook. Uh, page number, oh, oh, where is it? Page number five on top, right? So I've mixed up the topics a little bit so that you understand better. But page number five, ke upar, that whole uh, paragraph put a star mark next to it. Thank you, thank you for that. So now, of course, we've understood this part of it, right? So quickly to summarize, we know that development can be associated with progress, growth and becoming better. And we know that different individuals will have different goals. But we know that at the end of the day, not all goals will be aligned, right? It's not that everybody has, you know, goal which will help in benefiting them. Sometimes it can be conflicting as well, right? So it can be conflicting or it can oppose each other. What is development for this person might not be development for the other person it could not be helping them in any manner and we associate somebody has made progress in life or somebody has you know you know they have attained their developmental goals when they have a certain inflow of money or what we call as inflow of income yes so this is what we mean by this right now of course I told you if you have income you are able to make progress and all of that but you imagine you live in a very beautiful house, okay? You made, you built your dream house. Yes, you are making now, let's say, 50 lakhs per year. Very fancy house, yes? You have built your dream bungalow, right? Like Mukesh Ambani, you've built Antilla already. Beautiful flat, you beautiful building you made, right? Big, big French windows are there. You see that you have a personal chef who's going to make you all your favorite, you know, food items. You have all the fancy cars. Now, I don't know what are fancy cars, but I'm assuming Lamborghini is very fancy, right? So you have some two, three Lamborghinis, right? So all these fancy things you have attained. Now, all of these things are materialistic, yes? They are all material goals, right? Or material thing, goods that are there, yes? Material goods. But you imagine that there is no proper water, right? Or polluted air, okay? Polluted air all around you. Yes, and you see that the temperature is always 45 degrees, right? If you step outside your house, it is 45 degrees. You are not able to travel at all. Now, what is the point? What is the point if you can, you know, if at one point, yes, I'm giving you a hypothetical situation. Somebody is like, I'll buy clean water and all. See, hypothetically, if things around you is not good, you have all these things, but what makes life enjoyable, right? Or what if 
you are there with all of this but you have nobody to share with right or if you don't have your friends with you you don't have your friends to enjoy with you right you don't have you know maybe you are living far far away from your family and you're not able to meet them regularly then how is it that you are going to enjoy these things right so it gets a little bit lonely no so life is not just about materialistic things life is also about a lot of non materialistic things which money cannot buy i cannot go give 100 rupees to 10 people and say that hey you become my friend for 100 rupees i can't do that right friends cannot be bought respect cannot be bought hard work if you are earning 50 lakhs every year it means that you need to put in hard work you will not be sleeping 24 by 7 and money keeps coming into your account no you need to put in the hard work right you need to be sincere to your work you need to make sure that people respect you because at the end of the day all of this is what makes you happy right if you want to be happy money is not going to although there can be a lot of debate but what i believe is also that money does not buy you happiness right there are a lot of things which money can afford but quality of life is going to be a mix of materialistic and non materialistic goals so when you say that you want to become a proud citizen you want to earn respect of people you want to earn this life is always going to have materialistic as well as non materialistic thing and developmental goals is not just for economic growth but it is also for better quality of life right so with this we understand that income is one thing and materialistic goals are one thing but we need to have some non materialistic goals as well right freedom equality exactly which is why we are going to understand a little bit more on the development aspect yes so have we understood this so far hero please unnecessarily don't say things or let's maintain the decorum of the class right so far are we all feeling clear are we all feeling good about this chapter this is a very easy chapter right and aise beta beta we can you know like what do you say this chapter is very um, you know not not like there are very tech, there are technical things that we have to remember and memorize but it's also very simple chapter like as a story story may you can learn with examples and you can go but in this chapter one thing i will tell you is that examples are very very important which is why understanding the basic right you have to learn properly okay so now we have understood that okay you know every individual has goals right but and we know that every individual has developmental goals but your country also has developmental goals no there are so many different countries who have all countries will have like a developmental goal now does this mean that aryan here or let's say let's take ramappa all of them have their own goals okay but we also see that our country india has some set amount of developmental goals okay we want to make sure that we use clean energy we want to make sure that water is clean and all of that but here we also see that these people have their own goals now does this mean that individuals will do their own thing country will do its own thing yes does it happen that everybody is just moving along their own way now of course we what we also observe that idea of development differs from person to person right then how can we you know or what should be the idea of development for a nation yes so it could be that if everybody is so self absorbed in their own goals it could be that there will be so many conflicting goals that could may or may not have an impact on the country as well right which is why here we see that the goals of national development yes we see that national developmental goals are aligned for the people because at the end of the day nation is made of people no so what are their goals they tend to keep in mind that okay overall people should be happy they should have jobs they are making money there should be equality for the people right cleanliness should also be there technology should be advanced enough so that they are able to live a better quality of life they should have a healthy building healthy surroundings yes they they should have better education they should have better healthcare facilities also so this is what the country eventually or the nation will focus on right some things which will make make things better for them but what will happen if people have conflicting goals now we just learned no country is doing all of this but what if there are conflicting goals like for example the dam example that we took right we took the dam example now the dam example wherein we see that tribal people are there or we see that and then we see industrialists are there and then we see that they are conflicting goals now how do we decide whose goal is better for the nation 
right? Whose goal is going to be better for the nation? Now here we will consider something as a majority, right? When the country decides these developmental goals, they will decide the majority that is there. Okay, I understand that of course maybe 5 people or 10 people might get displaced here. But I am able to, with, with this particular project, we are able to provide many, many houses, thousands of houses with electricity. So that way, isn't this better for my nation, right? This is a better decision for the nation. And I will give them money so that they will be able to settle better somewhere else. So here they consider on what is necessary for the larger people. Now somebody asked me, ma'am, why is national development so important? Why am I studying about it? Why is national development something that I need to worry about? I should only look at my developmental goals. See, tomorrow you want to have a better quality of life. We see that that should also be aligned with the way the nation progresses. Now normally you'll be like, oh, Switzerland, you know, looks very developed and you feel like living there. That's because as a country, we see that they are making progress towards that, right? But we also understand that at the same time, it makes it a better space for the people to live in. Similarly, our country, India, works hard towards making sure that they provide all of this for us as citizens, making sure that we become, we lead or we take the path towards becoming a well-developed country, right? We are on that path, yes? Now, I understand that minority is also important, yes, but we're talking about setting developmental goals, yes. But what if one project helps in a particular thing and the other project helps in altogether different things? Like, do they have equal importance then? See, now, in our country, right, obviously multiple projects are running. And see, in our country, our country is a democratic country, right? So the people also have voices. So of course, there are projects, if at all we feel like that's not going to be helpful, we have raised voices against it in the past as well. You know, if at all, maybe cutting down a certain large area of trees is going to impact the environment. And if they have proposed such a project, the people will also raise their voices, right? So when you talk about developmental projects, it's not just for... It's not unidirectional where government will tell, okay, this is happening. We have our voice, right? So we see that even though, yes, we see that even though there are many projects happening, their equal importance, it will not be the same project is happening in that same place. One after the other, it will slowly keep taking place, right? But eventually, we see that if it aligns towards the, you know, if it aligns towards the developmental goals, well and good. But why are there conflicts? Conflicts are there because, see, the way I think is not going to be the way you think. Some of you will tell me, oh ma'am, I understand the way you teach. But there will be students who may not be able to understand the way I teach, right? So that is a conflict that will happen. And I don't blame, see, you can't say, oh, how dare you? Everybody has their own thought process, their own way of understanding things. And everybody has different ideas. You need to be accepting of it, right? We need to be expect, uh, accepting of it. What are the aspects covered? That these are the aspects which are covered under national development. Yes? So are we all clear with this? Yes, are we all clear? Okay, very good, very good. So now of course, let's move on to the last part of it to understand that, okay, if developmental goals are there and national developmental goals are there, how can we compare different countries? How can I say that one country is better developed than the other country, right? How am I saying that country A is well developed, country B that is there is developing, country C that is there is, you know, not developed. Now there should be some criteria, right? So let's take some example. Now for country A, now let's assume that country A wanted to build better roads, right? And they wanted to improve their infrastructure or they wanted to make more nice, nice buildings, make more hospitals, right? And let's assume that they also wanted to make sure that they get more jobs, right? So this is what country A wanted to do. But country B here, they were like this year, if I decide that, okay, if I decide that I will bring in at least 50,000 tourists, yes? I will bring in 50,000 tourists and I will make sure that, you know, I bring in more hotels so that the tourists can live. I will bring more of that. And I will also make sure that a lot of people will come and visit my country. This is my developmental goal for the year. Hypothetical, right? This is all very hypothetical. Now, how? Let's assume that this they decided this in the beginning of 2022. And in the end of 2022, they decided that 
I achieved all my goals, right? I achieved everything. I am developed, right? Yes, I have achieved my goals and my country is well developed. Now, how do you decide? Now, how is it that you are deciding that country A is developed more or country B is developing more if they both have achieved their developmental goals? What they set out to do, they achieved it. Now, it's not the same, right? There should be a way of measuring things, yes? Now, you imagine I gave you one bottle of water and you ask me how much water is there and I'll tell you it is one bottle. Right? You asked me one bottle, I gave you one bottle. But it's not really helping me measure, right? Because bottles could be of varying sizes, right? So we see that there could be smaller size bottles, bigger size bottles, various ways in which you can measure things. So you need to have an easy way of measuring, right? So we see that if I have to say a country is developing or developed, right? So one way they decided that we could understand this by comparing countries based on their national income. Now, what is national income? Yes, what is it first? First and foremost, national income is the total income of the residents in the country. Now, why is national income necessary? We see that more income means more of all the things that humans require. So they thought that, hey, national income is a good way for us to measure. Now, you think about it. If I tell you the national income or the total income, I'm saying that basically you add everything. So you imagine there are four people, right? There are four people and each of them make 1000 rupees. Yes. What is going to be the national income of this particular country, right? The national income is going to be 4000, right? So this is going to be country A. Now imagine country B here had double the number of people. Yes? They had double the number. So imagine they had total. Just make, let me get to the fact where I draw it. And each of them were making only 500 rupees. Now at this point, eight people making 500 rupees, right? No, they're not making 1000 rupees. Eight people, they're making only 500 rupees. How much will they get total? What is the national income? Tell me. Each of them are making 500 rupees in country B. But there are eight of them, right? 4000. Now, can you say that based on the national income, both country A and country B are equally developed? Yes or no? Based on this, they are equally developed. Yes or no? Okay, everybody tells me, mom, yes. Somebody say, mom, no. Yes, no, yes, no. Okay, a lot of confusion. But I'm glad that you're giving me an honest answer, right? Actually, no. Because country A is making 4,000 rupees with lesser number of people where each of them are making 1,000 rupees which is good enough money for them. While here, what work is maybe done for by four people, we see that they are making only 500 rupees, right? So here we see that it is not a useful measure because first and foremost, different countries have different population, right? Eight people, four people, different population. Similarly, wellness of people also depends, right? So here you saw that there was a disparity, right? You saw that 4,000, 4,000 was the end. But you, you don't realize what is the total population. We are not considering population. We are not considering, um, what do you say? We are not considering whether they are having, they are getting good amount of money. Right? You don't know how much each person is making. Now, I gave you 1,000, 1,500, 500. But of course, the money comparison will differ, right? And imagine a country like India, based on total income, you could see that more amount of money that is there, right? So we see that comparison for national income is not ideal, right? Yes. Which is why, what did they suggest? They suggested that a country with average income, you will understand better. At least you will see on an average, how much is it that a person will understand, right? Or how much is it that a person is getting on an average? Yes? So why is the total income of country not used to make comparison? This is the reason everybody, please take a screenshot, right? So this is a question that they will ask you. Why are we not considering total income of a country? Because first and foremost, the population is not specified. And based on the population, total income can differ. Now that will not tell you whether it is actually developed more or less. 
which is why we are switching towards an alternative measure which is the average income right now average income is also called as per capita income so when you take average of something you will take the total you will you it's so a simple average that you take in maths, right? So as you can see, the per capita income of PCI is taken by the total income of the population and you will divide it by the total population. Yes? Do you have this topic? Absolutely. Please go to page number 8. Page number 8, you have this topic which is very, very important, right? So you see that this formula is going to help you. Total income by total population, right? So we see that this is going to be a better way of doing it. So here's a small exercise for you. This is there in page number 9. This is there in page number 9. And I want you to do this. Where I want you to calculate the per capita income. Yes? Everybody calculate the per capita income of country A and country B. Yes? Ashmeet, I am getting to that point. <laughs> I am getting to that point. So now of course I need you to calculate, see I am not calculated okay and I am very, you are all very good at math. Khushbu ma'am, Arush ma'am will be very happy if you are go all going to give me the answer. So what do you have to do for country A, 9500 plus 10500 plus 9800. I am not calculating, I am trusting your answers, I have not done this calculation divided by 5, right. So what have you got, all of you have got 10,000, I trust your answer. So, but that's how you'll calculate it for country A. So, this is going to be 10,000. I'm not very quick with math. Next, country B. What is the answer? Yes. Country B. Everybody, country B. So, we see that there is individual 5 who is making 48,000. Other than that, everybody is making 500 rupees only. Oh, oh very sad. Okay, both you are we are getting 10,000, right? Yes. I calculated country B, we've got 10,000. 10,000, 10,000. Okay, both we have got 10,000. Now, based on average income, right? Based on average income, it suggests that country A and country B are more or less the same. Now, we are at a similar, you know, junction, right? We are at a very uh, similar point at this point. See, I have not calculated, I am assuming that this is the case, yes? But, distribution of income is not the same, right? Distribution of income is not the same. Just give me one minute. So, distribution of income as we know is not the same. So, there is a disadvantage of using average income, right? And what is the disadvantage? We see that although it is useful for comparison, it does not really tell us how it is distributed. How is that income distributed amongst people? We see that it can hide disparities amongst people. Because you know that in a country, right? We know that in a country, we get to know that roughly a person may make 1 lakh a month. Imagine. But does that mean that roughly everybody is making 1 lakh? It means that there are some people making 5-6 lakhs and there are some people who are just having daily wages. Which is why we see that you drawback of average income is something that we have to know. And this is also a question they will ask you for 2 marks. And they have not really given it e properly but yes, you will have to know. Right? So this is the formula that you will have to use. Yes? This, so Student Ash, as we all know, right, per capita income, although is something that may have or it hides disparities, we see that this is not the only parameter that we use, right? So earlier they were thinking that just based on income alone, we will measure developmental goals. But now they have understood that only this alone is not going to be helpful, which is why we need to have various more parameters, right? Kind of like if you have to pick your football team, no? Knowing football alone is enough. Imagine if I know football and I want, I'm like, yeah, I know football, but I don't know, I can't run fast. I don't have any skills. Then will I go and I will join my football team? Can I join football team? No, right? Just one, knowing football is important. But 
there are various aspects for me to join a team right knowing football is also necessary not like i don't know anything about football and i'm like yes i'm ready to play i don't know the rules right so knowing football is important but other aspects are also important techniques are important understanding the game is important having team spirit is important similarly when you are not looking at whether a nation is developed or no per capita income is one factor but there are various other things as well that you have to keep in mind which we will discuss in the later classes i mean in the next class because right now it will become very heavy for all of you to understand right somebody asked me ma'am is total income gdp yes it is the total income of the country is basically the gdp that is there yes so with this of course we're going to quickly look at one important thing right so as we all know based on this particular thing right based on this per capita income the world bank publishes a world development report now later you will learn there is one different report human development index human development report so many reports and everything will come but you need to remember this who publishes the world development report it is the world bank right now world bank is not like other banks right we see that the world bank is responsible for making sure that they tally whatever is happening in different countries and based on that they decide that there are you know high income countries or rich countries and there are low income countries and there are middle like what do you say lower middle upper middle countries and all of that right so we see that based on this report is what you decide whether a country is well developed or whether a country is developing or whether a country is not developed right so these are some data which is given in your textbook just put a star mark it is there in page number 8 yes so everybody are we all clear with what we discussed yes today we started with understanding so quickly to summarize right so i just want don't want to take too much of your time so quickly to summarize we learned that what is development which is nothing but moving towards all round progress or achieving goals we know that there are individual developmental goals we know that there are national developmental goals and we make sure that and we know that go in developmental goals can that are there can be conflicting yes so how do we measure we may measure it based on income but we know that for development to happen we know that it needs to be a mix of materialistic plus non materialistic goals that are there for holistic development now of course at the end of the day we know that in order to measure national development we know that different nations that are there have different ways of you know different countries how do we know whether they are developed or no so we learn that based on that we could measure it in different ways one is based on total income or the national income wherein we add everybody's income together but we know that this came with certain disadvantages right because we know that the population was not taken into account right so no pop population was not included yes and we also know that at the same time it really did not tell how the wealth was distributed which is why they came up with the concept of pci that is per capita income right so based on per capita income we saw that this was nothing but the total income divided by the total population now we know that this right this right here gave us an average idea of how much each person was making but this also had its own disadvantages right yes so everybody with this as we know i know you have a doubt that ma'am i know everything in this chapter but i'm not able to write it right so we see that although you know how to write it i i mean you know the concept but i don't know how to write it i'm going to be helping you all with it disparity is nothing but differences right disparity is nothing but differences yes so are we all clear on a scale of 1 to 10 how confident are we feeling yes on a scale of 1 to 10 how confident are we feeling ma'am uh, define see capital total income is basically when you add the income of every individual in the country it gives you your total or national income your per capita income is your average income where you take the total income of the country and divide it by the total population right that gives you the average yes so as you all know this is as simple as that so now of course everybody here's a quick homework question for all of you yes 
so I am going to give you a quick homework question and I am going to probably give it from your textbook itself so that take the effort to give me the answer right so I all I want all of you to tell me or I'll just make my own question what are the disadvantages of comparing countries based on national income yes so today we have just learnt the basics of it right so we see that today we have just learnt the basics of it and I understand that some of you are very worried but don't worry just stick with me trust me and I'm going to be there towards till the very end with you and I'm telling you that towards the end you all are going to you know really understand now I did teach pretty softly I mean slowly itself I actually broke the chapter I really thought that we could do it at one go but I did break the chapter into two parts so that you understand understand things easily yes so now of course next time I will keep this in mind green but in case if you are finding it a little tough I'll make sure that you know you can rewatch the video where you reduce the speed where I'm teaching you slowly yes so with this everybody we come to the end right now I know a lot of you were asking me about my class earlier yesterday which was scheduled for summer project now I do understand that I wanted to do that class but then later I realized there were a lot more things that I wanted to add to that class so I will be taking an amazing class on that with a lot more improved version of what I had planned earlier so stay tuned it's going to come in the weekend and it's going to really help you but up until then everybody if you want to know when my classes are coming when I'm going to be taking the next class what is the next class then all of you don't forget to hit the like button on this video do not forget to hit the subscribe button as well and I will keep this in mind we will do a mentee okay so you do have Arsh ma'am's class at 8 15 so don't miss that lot of important questions coming your way so thank you so much for being a part of today's class I will see you soon but up until then take care lots of love and bye bye